Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to use a quilt backing as the binding. So this kind of cuts out the step of sewing a binding onto the top. You can just use the backing. Um, it makes it a little hard to square up, a little harder to square up your quilt top, so I don't use it a ton. But especially if I'm doing a small project, like I'm doing this little table runner here, sometimes I like to do this. So the first thing you do is you make your quilt sandwich and you're going to quilt your project however you want to. Um, I just did some simple straight quilting right along the middle row there. And then the next part is kind of the trickiest, which I've already done, but I'm going to tell you how to do it. You need to cut your batting down so that it is flush with your quilt top. And you have to really be careful not to cut the backing. Because if you cut the backing, then you're in a big pickle because you've now got a hole in your backing that's already all quilted onto your quilt. So, so I like to just take scissors or sometimes I'll just fold the backing back really far and then I cut it to make sure that I don't mess it up. Alright, so after you've cut it so that it's flush with your top, then you're going to cut it so that there is one inch around the entire top. So this backing is one inch wide and it's one inch from the edge of your quilt top. All right. Then you're going to bring it to your ironing board and you're going to press it halfway towards the quilt top. So here's here it is open. I'm going to bring this edge and press it so that it touches the edge of the quilt top. And then you're going to fold it over one more time so that it creates the binding. So here's my inch, fold it over and press, fold it over, press, and then fold it over one more time and press. And what I do then is I like to do two parallel sides at a time. So I'd go ahead and put a bunch of either clips or pins in this. And then you're just going to sew right along the edge. And you can see I've already done that here. So I've sewn right along this edge on the top. Don't go from the back, but put it through so that you're looking at the top. So I'm going to finish up this edge. I've done this side, and I'm going to do the opposite side straight down. And I, I like to try to go slow so that I can be sure that my line is straight and that it's right along the edge. And then you want to stop as soon as you get to the corner. Don't go past the corner. So you can see, here's this little corner where my quilt top finishes. I'm going to stop right there. Just backstitch once or twice. All right. So now I have my two parallel sides that are done, and I'm going to show you how to do the corners. This is kind of the trickiest part. But it's not too bad once you see how it's done. So bring it to your ironing board again. And here's my side that I still have left to bind and quilt. So what I'm going to do is take this corner and I'm going to fold it um, at like a 45 degree angle so that it makes like a 45 degree angle right there. And then just press it. Okay. And then I'm going to do that to the other side as well. I'm going to place my finger right here and fold this up. and press it. Okay, so now with those two sides so that they're like a kind of a 45 degree angle, like a triangle, now we're going to fold this in half again, just the same way we did on the other side. So I'm going to fold this up so that it just touches the quilt top. And press. Okay, and then to finish up, all right, sorry, I've got some strings here. We're going to fold it up one more time, and you'll see that it creates these really nice mitered corners on the edge. So now I'll just place pins or um, clips along there, and I'm going to 
just start right here at the corner, sew right along there all the way down and back stitch at the other corner. And there you have it, it's machine bound and you use the backing as your binding.